Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Space Food Truck. This is... At first, when I was like a space food truck, I was like, oh, this is gonna be like a little cutesy sci-fi um, tycoon game, like Lemonade Stand or... I don't know, you know, one of the railroad tycoons or roller coaster tycoon or something like that about operating a food truck in space. It's not that. It's actually a uh, multiplayer cooperative board game that I'm going to play single player here because you can play it single player as well. Um, that has been digitized. I, I believe it's an original game, not like an adaptation of a of a uh, an existing board game, like a pen and paper or whatever you would call a board game that's physical but not digital, which I guess would just be board game. Um, that has uh, multiple unique roles and involves a lot of teamwork and is a little bit of deck building based. Uh, when I was playing with TB, he said it was a little bit more like um, Dominion, which I've never actually played myself. I get a pretty large like Forbidden Island or Pandemic vibe from it in the sense that you're not really playing cards, but you have to, you know, basically pool your actions with your teammates to cooperate to come up with the best strategy to accomplish what are uh, common goals, if that makes sense. So the real strength of this game is that the online works and exists. And uh, you can totally play it with your friends, and you can play it with strangers as well. There is only a quick match, you, there's no like lobby browser or anything like that. What I will say is, as with anything, especially like multiplayer focused indie games, your mileage may vary when it comes to finding an online game. Your best bet is going to be uh, finding friends that you can play this with. It's also $21 Canadian, which probably puts it at 20 American on the... Uh, on the store, and I got a review copy uh, from TB, actually, which is a weird way of doing disclosure, I guess. But uh, we're just going to do a single-player game, because you can actually play it single-player and almost consider it like uh, Tharsis, if that makes sense. Like, it's a little similar to Tharsis in that it's RNG-dependent, um, although with a little bit less, like, overt, literal, physical dice rolling going on, of course. Uh, and we'll just start a new game here. We'll play on medium difficulty, which is the middle one, unless back is a difficulty that I hadn't considered. And I'll get to explaining uh, the story that goes on here. Ah, space sprinkled across its vastness are more exotic flavors than any single tongue could hope to fathom. We, the Galaxy Gourmet crew, risk our lives to bring the finest dishes from across the stars right to your home planet and to earn money so we can repay our creditors for this very expensive ship. The captain has plotted our course, the chef selected some signature recipes, the engineer says all systems are go, and the scientist, we prefer not to ask what he's up to anymore. All we're missing are fresh ingredients and hungry customers. So we do have four classes here, and if you play it online, you know, every person gets their own unique class. But I'll be playing the roles of all the classes, which also works fine if you consider it more of a strategy game uh, and less of a... Um like a multiplayer board game. I, I like that it works both ways. I mean, I guess technically you could just play Pandemic by yourself and that is okay, but it feels kind of lonely. But um, in this, I, I really feel like I'm managing a strategy game. So it's neat that it's kind of uh, polymorphic in that sense that you can play it as a single player game, even though its strength lies in multiplayer. But just keep that in mind as we play here, that uh, it, it's the kind of thing is definitely heightened by the communication aspect of talking with friends. So this is our map. The first, second, third, uh, that basically indicates where we make our deliveries. So I'll do my best to explain the multitude of systems going on in this game right now. First things first, we get a bad uh, event that's happened to us. Uh, an event happens every turn. Could be good, could be bad. This one's bad. Shouldn't have clicked that. A bogus link hacks your discard pod, sucking a random card from your hand. So we used to have five cards, now we will have four. Um, let's start by looking at the map here. And I'll explain what's going on. So we have three foods that we have to make in order to complete the game. First one is bacon wraps. We need an anti pepper and an astro onion. I just want to take a look for a second here at our Z-Mart before I forget. Which should allow us to see. Um, no, we don't have any of those ingredients right off the bat. Which is a little bit of bad luck for us. Again, there's a lot of RNG happening here. Which I saw in Steam reviews some people were mad about. It's the kind of thing that I think, you know, it's to personal preference. If you're okay with a game that has a lot of RNG focus and can probably fairly be called unfair, then uh, you'll be fine with it. Otherwise, you will not be. Um, probably, at least. Let's go look at our map again. Um, so we need to make the bacon wrap by cooking these two ingredients with our chef. And then delivering it to the first uh, area there. Which is actually not that far away. We can jump these beacons uh, by filling up our FTL. Which is basically just the our FTL drive, if that makes sense. Um, and our captain can do that. So our captain's special ability uh, is... Uh, I was going to say antiquated, but I mean elucidated maybe is what I'm going for with these job cards. Captains can ask around, play to reveal a clue for three unvisited planets, or they can engage to power up the FTL drive and then jump to other planets. Um, if you're wondering what's going on with these like symbols here, like 
orange square two, orange square four. I'm gonna explain that, but first I'm gonna explain the lose condition. If your ship takes seven HP damage, you die. That's our only lose condition. Engineer can fix the ship. There's uh, shields, but some things go through shields. We can replenish shields, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the orange indicates how much power that card generates, and the blue indicates how much that card is worth. So as you can see right now, we have two power from both A Taste of the Future cards here, which are basically just used to power uh, other cards. And then we have Ask Around. This costs zero, but is worth one. And Engage. Play this with power to charge the FTL drive, then travel as far as your charge allows. So if we played this with our two power, we could jump two beacons because our FTL drive will be powered up for two. First, we're going to Ask Around. And we're going to look at... We're starting here, so we're going to look at these beacons. Eureka location revealed. You get a card for going there, so this is what it's revealing to us. Um, let's look at this one. It's all a relative location revealed. We're looking for some of these ingredients, ideally. Space-time files location revealed. That's not necessarily great. Every turn, by the way, you discard your hand and then get new cards from your draw pile. And then when your draw pile is dead, you shuffle the discard pile into your draw pile and draw from that. So basically, you're constantly filling up your draw pile and discard pile. And you, you want to make your deck better as the game goes along by getting high value cards. But we'll talk about that as we go on. Right now, let's just consider it like a strategy game. So we'll play Engage. It's a little complicated the first times you get through it, and the in-game tutorial basically consists of uh, a built-in YouTube video, which I think is not the most optimal way to do it, but once you wrap your head around it, it's pretty easy. I mean, board games usually are just a, a relatively complicated array of rules that, you know, you slowly wrap your head around and learn optimal play. So I played Engage. I played it with two cards that have one power each, which gives us two power. That goes to our FTL drive, and then we're going to jump one here. Oh, I didn't mean to click done. Actually, I think it's fine that we click done. We'll click punch it. Go to our next section. Ontarion. I wonder if these developers are Canadian. Eureka! A stimulating encounter as your scientist inspired. A random research note is unlocked from any working lab station, and the card goes directly into that player's hand. So basically, ignore some of this. We progress further down the tech tree, and our engineer is going to get an engineer-specific card uh, that is going to be good for him. Two power, three value. That's really good, actually. Um, I guess we'll dock ship because I clicked done like an idiot and maybe wasted one fuel. Oh, the fuel stays, so that's fine. Um, we do need an anti-pepper, so actually discovering this blueprint here is pretty good. And we'll take uh, the plumber bot and we'll take, uh, the, we'll take uh, the claw. Don't worry about that so much right now. I'll talk about the mechanic as we go on. Every turn is two phases, uh, effectively, so we're going to move on to our next phase. At the final phase, you have to buy something. So the total value of the cards that you spent is what your wallet size basically is, as you can see right here. And there's all sorts of cool deck stats that you can see. Everybody's roughly around the same here. But um, So we can use our four uh, Z credits to buy something. And I think we are going to buy a Hall Pass. This allows us to move to any room, which is useful to give cards to other players or to fix problems that'll show up. So let's just not worry too much about that. That goes instantly into our discard pile. We'll end our turn. All of our spent cards go into the discard pile. We draw a new hand. Presentation-wise, I think the game does a pretty good job of letting you know what's happening turn to turn, which is really important considering uh, that there's a lot of mechanics at work here. Crisis, technical difficulty. So now it's the chef's turn. By the look of those sparks, it's safe to assume we have a faulty silk transducer in the workshop. The chef and engineer have 12 turns to get there and resolve the crisis, or the ship takes two damage. Now, 12 turns may seem like a lot, but actually, um, the, the only thing we need to do to fulfill this crisis, like to, to solve it, is to move the chef to here. But we actually need a hall pass card, or a card that moves us to the workshop by itself to do that. So we can't do that right now. And 12 turns is like one turn you, 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 etc, etc. So it actually only takes a few cycles for us to really find this being a problem. And it'll do two damage to us, which is kind of a lot. So as the chef, our goal is to cook the ingredients. So we really want to buy the anti-pepper so that we can cook it on our next turn. Um, we need to find an astro onion at some point. But uh, the first thing we're going to do is use this card taste test. It costs zero and allows us to draw two cards. We probably want to get a Hall Pass. We could get more power, but I think we want to get a Hall Pass, and the reason for that is that we can then move here and resolve the problem, which saves us the issue. You can kind of probably see the Tharsis comparison now. 
Now, we can either discard this or destroy it, or destroy it or discard, rather, respectively. You might say, why would you discard, or sorry, why would you destroy when you could discard? Well, if your card is shitty, and you will actually sometimes get cards that are like negative one value and zero power, then you want to destroy them to thin your deck and make your deck stronger in the future. So, this is good, though. Like, having one power is at least okay for now, I think. So, um, I think we'll just discard this, and uh, we will... Use our hall pass to move to the workshop. That'll resolve that crisis. The faulty silk transducer in the workshop has been dealt with, preventing any damage to the ship. It just needed a little love and duct tape, and we kicked it a few times. So that's good to solve that problem. Now, because we're in the same room as our engineer, we could give him some cards. And we could actually see his cards right now if we want. He's got the neutral pill. He's got his own hall pass. He's got the combination neutral pill and hall pass. Anyway, he can use trusty wrench to uh, repair shields or... Uh, Repair other systems that are broken, like for example, our scientist has a broken draw pad thanks to a, an event, so we could repair that. So he may need some power for that, but the Nutri-Pill is really good for power regardless. Or we could upgrade the ship with better shield capacity or engine capacity, which is probably good. But uh, I think we want to actually give card, and we're going to give um, the engineer one of our Taste of the Future cards. Just so that he can do one more thing next turn. And then we'll enter our next phase. We can't cook really because we don't have the ingredient yet that we need to cook with, and we need to be back in the kitchen. But just playing this card will move us back. Um, so let's go to our next phase. I wonder if I should just play Cook right now. Oh, uh, you gotta play it with two power. But we're discarding anyway. This at least moves us back to the kitchen. This might be a bad move, but... Even though we're not cooking anything, this lets us move back here so that... You know, on the next turn, we don't have to move back here to, in order to cook something. So let's go to our next phase, because you can only cook in the kitchen. But I guess cooking brings you back to the kitchen, but we were going to discard it anyway. You get the idea. So we're going to take Anti-Pepper, and we're going to hope that we're able to cook that on the next turn. We could take Leftovers, but it kind of thins your deck. Like, it makes your deck worse, because it's just a one power, zero value card. And you don't want to be drawing those in the future. So um, we picked up Cook, Taste Test. Unfortunately, we did not pick up the Anti-Pepper. Alright, so we got the scientist turn. Our event, Vexel. We just fumigated. Where do these things keep coming from? Add a Vexel to your discard. Unfortunately, this means that we just got a shitty card in our deck. The scientist, I think, is probably one of the easiest roles to play. Um, you have abilities that basically further you down the tech tree. So without kind of belaboring the point, Foresight allows us to peek at future technology. Research, if we use it with power allows us to actually research technology. And this technology is going to give uh, good cards, usually, to other people in our ship. So you know what? Let's give our chef another good card. Moon Dust, artificial ingredient, high value, decent power. And we'll give the, well, why don't we give ourselves one as well? A Breakthrough, play this card to reduce any character's lab cost by two. We could also, if we had more research points, mutate and make a card more powerful. I hope I'm doing a decent job of explaining this. You don't necessarily have to fully understand what's happening right now. Um, you know, you can just wrap your head around it as we get going here. I think I'm gonna buy the claw. Play to pull any non-job card from your discard into your hand. Could be useful in the future to grab something important. We'll end our turn. Discard. And actually, that's a pretty decent hand for getting, uh, getting stuff in the future. Now, our engineer is stacked. Doors busted. A random door is malfunctioning. If they're already all busted, take one damage. So this means that nobody can get into or out of the kitchen, which can obviously be bad if we want to give ingredients to our chef or have our chef solve a crisis or something. Um, I think we're going to start with Trusty Wrench, and we're going to give it two power. This allows us to uh, fix broken items from anywhere on the ship. So we will put a Nutra Pill in there, which gives us two power, and then we will use that to fix... Ah, we, I wish I'd put more power in there. We'll use that to fix the draw pod for now. That sucks, though. I should have tried to fix the door. Um, and then we'll go to upgrade ship. And we'll put three power in here. Oh, you can only play it with one power. Okay. And we'll upgrade our shield capacity by one. And then, sadly, we're done because I'm an idiot. I totally could have put a taste of the future on here. We could also hall pass and then give, like, our captain more power. What's your hand like right now? Just a hall engage. You got some power. You know, I think I'm gonna hall pass because we're gonna discard it anyway. And then give our scientist uh, more power in the future here. By the way, we're probably not going to be able to... Uh, yeah, there we go. Give them more power so they can research more. We're probably not gonna be able to finish a game over the course of this. 
but you can really see how things uh, get going here. Um, let's take, uh, we got a lot of value. Let's take Diploma Bot. Basically, this resolves one crisis for us for free. So what I will say is that, you know, you're probably a little bit overwhelmed. At least I feel like if I was listening to myself, I'd be a little bit overwhelmed and confused by all the mechanics that are going on here. That's not to say that you're stupid or anything like that. I mean exactly the opposite. I mean to say that it's, uh, it's not an easy game, at least to just watch and understand. But also keep in mind, I'm playing all four classes, and what really is the strength of the game is that even though it's complex, there's kind of that modular complexity that every class adds on. Knowing the synergies and how the classes work together is essential to play it in single player, but to play it in multiplayer, you know, I was playing my first multiplayer game as the researcher, or the scientist, so every turn I was basically just like, okay, if you don't need me for a crisis, I'm going to use all my power to research. And that's my role. The engineer is like a flowchart, you know, do I need to fix stuff, do I need to fix the shields, do I need to fix doors or solve a crisis, uh, then we can upgrade something, you know? So the, the chef is a little bit more complex, and I haven't totally wrapped my mind around the captain yet, but... Uh, Apart from that, it's pretty easy uh, to play as a single class instead of all of them. We're going to charge up two power with our captain, uh, and we're going to move... Your next destination must be connected to the one you're on. Well, we're on this one. I guess we have to go here, and then here, and then here. Yeah, so we're... Wait, that's three jumps. Hold up. I'm doing this backwards. Close this. Close this one. We got one jump left. Close this one. Close this one. Sometimes, I do find the UI a little confusing. Go to this one. Yeah, there we go. Two jumps left. This is what I'm looking for. Then come here. Your next destination must be connected. What are you talking about, man? Okay, now we got three jumps. I guess these are the only ones we can go to. I kind of I thought those were connected, but they're not. Tell you what, let's go here. I, mean, I know we need to get here to deliver, but we need our ingredient first. Let's go here, here, here. And we'll, we'll just see what kind of events we get along the way. We could go more slowly. But we need an engage card every time we actually want to start the ship, so... It might be good to just get these events and, and see if we get some good stuff out of it. First event. The captain runs into an old flight buddy. Old flight school buddy. He knows where to find the blueprint for your rare ingredient. Oh my lord. That's that's distant, man. That's where Chocolium Powder is, which we need for our rarest uh, option there. Punch it again. We're going to move one more. We don't really need that right now. I really doubt we're going to deliver more than one thing. The game gets pretty tough. Your cook donates some old cooking grease for fuel. FTL charge refills plus two. Awesome. Let's punch it a little further. Embron. Pep talk. The captain would like a word. Another random player feels invigorated and draws a card. So that's one more power card for our scientist. We're going to dock. And we're looking for Astro Onion, which we totally got. Put a couple of those in there. Put some silk, which is basically a high power item. And do we need any more anti-peppers? We will in the future, so resupply. Beautiful. That was good. Um, we could haul pass ourselves and then give and engage. Nah, it doesn't really make any sense. I think we just go to next phase. We got a hand value of five. Let's buy the silk so we can use that uh, for power in the future. End our turn, and we're moving on to the chef here. Uh, well, we can make plenty of moves on the next one with all that power. Uh-huh. Hey, Cyberpunk. Unfortunately, we just had a card get um, taken away from us, and unfortunately, it was our cook card. So we can't actually cook anything in all likelihood on this turn. We'll use Taste Test. We got Taste Test and a Taste of the Future. We're going to take Taste Test and then discard a Taste of the Future. Then we're going to play Taste Test. You might say, how can you keep playing this? Well, we drew them because we have multiple copies in our deck, and then its cost is zero as represented by... The fact that when you read it, it just says play to draw two. It doesn't say play with power. All right. This time we get an anti-pepper and a taste of the future. I mean, we can't cook with the anti-pepper, but I guess we might as well take it for hand value. Discard a taste of the future. And then, um, I mean, that's pretty much it on this turn. We can't really haul pass because our door is broken. So we just go to the next phase and probably buy the Astro Onion. And then if we get the right like array of hands, we can start cooking ingredients and maybe even deliver it. And that, that, after accomplishing one objective, that's probably where we'd stop this episode. Um, not this episode, but like this Let's Look At. I realize that because I'm talking about what I'm doing, I'm not actually able to talk that much about how I like the game. The RNG mechanics are going to frustrate people. Uh, I don't necessarily know that it has an online community that's robust, but... I kind of equate it the same way I, I think about a board game. You know, if you buy, we, we bought Pandemic Legacy. It was 50 bucks. You can only play it 12 times or 10 times or something like that. Um, 
Which, it, it, that's a whole other issue. It's a great game. But in order to play it, I had to put it in a considerable investment. And I have to um, get three other people together. Unless I want to play it, you know, with two people or by myself. So, it's a big ask. This is a really convenient co-op board game to play. Um, if you can get your friends into it as well. And it's actually, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I had a ton of fun when I played it on uh, on TB's little preview stream with Mathis and Sinvicta. Uh, the catch is, you have to get other people to get it, and I guess for four people, that's 80 bucks. So it's a little bit more expensive than buying a copy of a board game that you could all play. Um, but I think that it is compensated somewhat by the extra convenience. You're probably not going to get your money's worth if you're just playing it as like an individual strategy game. But remember when I did my Let's Look at Tharsis, I was like, man, this would be really cool with online co-op or even like physical co-op. The game does have local co-op here, by the way. Um, but uh, this is kind of like... Very similar to that. Similar enough to that that I'm like, this is cool. Uh, it's also presented well, and you could argue that, you know, if you spend 15 bucks in Tabletop Sim, you get access to mods that allow you to, you know, do something similar to this. But I think the presentation, the fact that the rules are scripted and codified, which I understand you can do in Tabletop Sim, but not all mods have it. Um, and it actually supports the people who invented the game. Not that I'm saying the mods don't, the modders don't deserve support to begin with. Um, I, I think that that adds enough adds up to enough of a case, I guess, to, to make it a considerable um, purchase, I guess, if that makes Not considerable, but like a purchase to consider, I guess is what I mean. So here was our uh, problem here. A terrible person has fallen asleep at the wheel and his ship is on a collision course with ours. Discard two power to, to honk or eclipse our ship for one damage. We could take the damage and then use all of our power for research, but shields and HP are kind of precious. So I think we'll discard two Taste of the Future cards because we can. Um, and then we'll go to research, and we'll put two research in here, submit, and we'll get one new card for our captain, which is captain's orders. Play to teleport one unit to any room, and then I lost it, but we'll also mutate, and mutating gives one power to any one card permanently. Now, it's not all copies of that card, but it is any one card permanently. So let's give uh, one extra power to this Taste of the Future card, and our engineer can do a lot of stuff on their turn. Um... That's it. That's all our research. And that'll end our turn. So we'll go next phase. Um, at this point, maybe we want something that's just high value, but our cook already has a copy of. So let's pick up Astro Onion. And that makes our deck not so bad. I mean, that's the other kind of loop that's happening in the game is, okay, we're trying to accomplish all these objectives, but at the same time, we want to build a deck that's not shitty. So every time you take a Leftovers card or you get a card that's bad, your deck gets worse for the future because you're going to draw that card multiple times until you can destroy it. So um, I don't want to just like endlessly buy Leftovers here because it actually makes our deck worse in the long run. All right, so this time uh, we got more ability to do research on the next turn. Engineer's turn. There are good events, I swear. Just these have been mostly bad. We just fumigated. Where do these things keep coming from? Add a Vexel to your discard. So that's a zero power, negative one value card, which is bad for us. Um, but we can upgrade our ship and use Trusty Wrench to uh, repair some stuff. We should really repair both doors. And I think that's all we need to do. I think it should only be two power. So we'll use our upgraded Taste of the Future card. Repair, repair. I guess we could have repaired one level of shields as well. Um, but that's not necessary, I guess, right now. So we'll do that. Then we'll do upgrade ship, and we'll put two power. Oh, we can only do one every time, man. We'll do one power on that. That card actually had a workshop stat on the bottom, so it took us back to the workshop. Workshop indicator, not stat, I guess. And we will increase maybe FTL engine capacity right now, and unfortunately we just wasted one card, but that's okay. Um, we will need an anti-pepper in the future, and we will need, um cheese for our cook so i kind of don't want to take it i guess i'll take leftovers it does thin the deck out in a, or it thickens the deck i guess in a, in a way that's bad um for our engineer specifically but it might make it easier for the team to succeed okay captain's turn our events discard two power to dodge i hate it <laughs> at least we don't have more crises though more crises um so we only have two power I guess we use engage, and to be honest with you, we definitely want to start moving towards our delivery uh, position, because once we get to our, does that say jumps left, crab nebula? Oh, I can make both jumps. Um, once we get to our delivery zone here, if I have the food prepared, uh, or if I cook it there, I think, we'll complete our objective, which is actually awesome. The chef wants to show off one of his favorite dances. 
It's a pretty sweet song, I've got to admit. Discard two power to stop him, or he breaks two random items. Well, he's gonna break two random items, because I don't have two power, so... He's broken a draw pod and a lab station. We're gonna punch it one more. Um, a draw pod basically means that one unit is gonna draw one less card. And lab station means we can't research things for one other unit. For one unit, uh, one class that I don't know until we see the ship again. Technically stealing. Your engineer swipes some power from a busted old satellite. Shields refill plus two. That's good. That's a good event. It happened. All right, number one priority ingredients we're going to need in the future. The Zapmar, by the way, this is just our overall capacity for this area. We could throw some shit out if we want to, but uh, I think we're just going to go for, like, raw power here. We could use more power in our deck. And we could use a hall pass to put ourselves somewhere, but I don't think it's necessary. So we'll go to next phase. I think we'll buy... Um, let's buy an anti-pepper. This is where the deck stats come in handy. Average power, 0 0.6. Average worth, 0 0.9. So you know what? Maybe we want to balance that out and actually pick up some raw silk for our deck to make that deck's power higher, as you saw right there. More engage, more power. Ask around is a free card, which is good. Now, this is good. Our chef on this turn, unless he loses cards... Ah, ship takes one damage. Thankfully to our shields. The chef can cook some stuff here. Oh, but we have no power! Okay, we need to draw some power cards with taste test. This is awesome. So discard a taste of the future. Maybe we'll want to destroy those in the future. Oh my god, I discarded the wrong card. That's okay. We can still we got another taste test. We can do this. Sweet. So I'm not a huge idiot. Take this one. Uh, discard cook for now. And then we can play cook and two power and our astro onion. That card has no power. Oh, this sorry. Click submit. Then click on the astro onion. Oh, we could have cooked out of our discard pile as well. Oh, but we don't really want to cook moon dust anyway. There you go. So now you can see the check mark here. One ingredient is cooked. All we need to do is get the anti pepper again with a cook card, and then we're good to go. Next, next phase here. We're gonna have him buy the cheese because he needs the cheese for his deck to cook the antelope souffle next. End turn. Could have bought some other stuff, I guess. Well, no, he could have just bought leftovers. He's got cook, but he needs to draw the ingredient. Okay, it's our scientist turn. Cosmic Raid. Okay, so one uh, more lab station got busted. The cook and the engineer cannot get anything now. Um, I don't really want to peek, so we're just going to research with power. This is what I said when I said the scientist is like the easiest player to play as, I think. Uh, unless I'm just doing it terribly wrong. Uh, let's give our scientist one new card. This is Yellow X, an artificial ingredient uh, with decent power and decent... Uh, Decent value as well. Uh, and then, like, we can't... Re I guess, actually, we could use Foresight and Hall Pass together. Because the Hall Pass gives us power as well if we use it. And um, we can peek behind one of these uh, things here. And then we can see what we'd get if we click on it. So it's kind of just... I'd rather use power to directly research something than just looking at something. But um, I think that's okay. Now, our Scientist deck has higher worth than power. So we're going to take... Spun Silk, we can't afford Refined Silk, and this is going to get a little bit better there. Balance us out slightly. And it looks like we can do basically nothing next turn. Lots of power, but nothing to sink it into. Our Engineer gets a bonus card, which is beautiful. And should really on this turn... Oh, he's got the buffed Taste of the Future as well. Should really on this turn use Rusty Wrench, and we're putting like all the power into this. Maybe including Nutripill. What's up? Both both of our cat babies are in here. All right, so we got six power charged up into trust, Trusty Wrench. We'll use two here, two here, two here. Can't upgrade the shields. That was a really good turn, actually. <laughs> We've got a lot of hand value as well, so let's buy a Refined Silk to buff that. Oh, it's like perfect stats here. Perfectly uh, symmetrical stats, anyway. End our turns. Eh, it's not great for our next turn. I basically just want to finish this first objective and then we can end the video, but it might take another 10 minutes or so. Crisis, the second scientist. A rip in space-time opens in the lab, and through it steps the scientist Mustachio Doppelganger. He quickly begins building something and refuses to answer our questions. The engineer and captain have 12 turns to reach the lab and confront him, or the ship takes two damage. So, engineer and captain need to meet in the lab. This is where 12 turns starts to tick down pretty fast, because you're like, shit, I need to get them both a hall pass, and then meet there, and it has to happen within the next couple of cycles, or we're going to have some problems. Now, we do have a hall pass, so we can get our captain here after using some engage. But, now that I think about it, we really don't want to use engage, because we're already at the place where we want to be. So, here's what I think. First off, ask around allows us to get some clues for planets we can go to. Accident prone is revealed, that seems like a bad event. 
Solar Crab is something we're definitely going to need for the Antelope Souffle. And then the Breaky Bounce. Both of those sound kind of bad. Alright, so we're done there. But we do have a little FTL power, so here's what I'm thinking. Let's engage with one power. I might as well use two, I guess, to put it in the FTL drive. Submit. Then we're going to go to this one and pick up the ingredient. And then we're going to go back. Then we're going to go back. We're going to go to this one. And then we're going to go back. <laughs> we're going to... We're going to go... We're going to go back. We might be one away, but this is okay. Basically, I'm doing this to get to the solar crab. Uh, that we can then use as an ingredient. When you find solar crab, that'll enter the resupply area. Or maybe it'll just go directly to the chef. I guess we'll find out. There you go, solar crab. Dock here to download it, or keep traveling to ignore it. We'll dock here to download it. And then we'll make sure our chef is able to buy it. So we'll take solar crab, uh, spun silk... And then these two uh, bonus ones here that are more utility cards. Then we will haul pass, go to the lab, so that in the future, if our uh, engineer can get to the lab, we can fix this crisis. Sweet. Next phase. Um, you know what? Buy, buy the, buy the anti-pepper. It, it kind of compromises the ability for the chef to get the anti-pepper, but it also leaves an open space so that we're not just, like, shoving anti-peppers in there over and over and over. Um... I don't know what your hand is supposed to look like at this point. Because we really are just waiting for the chef to cook the final ingredients. Bonus card. That is great. We need to draw the ingredients. Um, we didn't draw the ingredient we should have drawn. We need to draw an anti-pepper. Which we can't do. <laughs> so I don't know if we, if we should cook this moon dust or what, man. Because I don't think we really have anything to do on this turn, unfortunately. What what happens if we cook this? I want to see. Like, we're going to lose these cards anyway. Oh, take that one off. Okay, put the moon dust in here. That ingredient isn't part of your current recipe. Yeah, okay, so we can't really do anything. I mean, we could use a hall pass and then give somebody some cards. But the hall, that's kind of, that's not a waste. But we need to come back to the kitchen anyway. But cook brings us back to the kitchen. All right, fine. We'll go to the workshop. And our engineer here... We're going to give you the Moon Dust card because it has great power. But it's going to lower our hand value quite considerably. Give card. You, Moon Dust. I should have given you Hall Pass, but I think you got one anyway, as is. Uh, and then we can buy the Anti Pepper. I mean, it's not bad to have two of them in the deck, maybe. And end our turn. I promise at some point we will finish this objective and you'll see what that's like. Okay, so the scientist basically has nothing to do. Corrosive Sludge. Discard three power to dodge. We're going to do that rather than taking two damage. And that gives us something to do. Dodge. Then we'll play Breakthrough. Reduces any character's lab cost by two. Um, you can't take it down to zero, because I guess that would be exploitable. So we'll just reduce the scientist by two. And that's our turn. Ah, uh, it's not our turn. Because we will give, even though our hand value is shit... We'll give uh, the captain some more power. I guess their hand value will be stacked. And with two, we couldn't have bought anything anyway. So we might as well just be content to take leftovers. And that's really where things start to go wrong. When your card economy is at the point where you're drawing uh, leftovers and vexels every turn, your life is, is in the pits, man. Crisis Spy Games. Our ship's AI notifies us that Universal Gourmand... Our sleazy competitors are attempting to hack our systems and swipe our recipes. The scientist and chef have 12 turns to reach the kitchen and break their connection, or the ship takes two damage. So now we need to... At least it's like completely opposite units. That's good. We have nothing we need to fix, so we should really, on this turn, upgrade our ship. So let's start with the... Uh, oh, we have a hall pass, too. So good. Okay. Uh, upgrade ship with one power. Submit. We're going to put that in our shields. I think then we could use uh, Rusty... Or sorry, we could use Rusty Wrench to heal for two. So let's do that. Even though we'll lose upgrade ship. I'm paying myself today for a hamburger on Tuesday. And this allows us to upgrade our shields by two. Or to, to repair our shields by two. So now... Pardon me? Why did, oh, no, we did get to it. just took an extra second. Then we play the Hall Pass, come into the lab, and the nice thing is we don't need to take one more action. It just resolves the crisis automatically. Um, our hand value is pretty good. Kind of feel like we should just give the scientist upgrade... Oh, but if we give them upgrade ship, we lose it forever. So you know what? I'm not giving you that card. I'm sorry to say. 
Um, your deck is really good, actually. Don't take the Solar Crab. Maybe take the... Um, maybe take the uh, Aegis Battery. Play to recharge shield by one. Of course this is inconsequential, because I'm going to leave this run anyway once we actually accomplish our objective. And if there's one other thing that I could say is a... Not necessarily a negative, but a your mileage may vary type factor. Um, the games do tend to play pretty long. I mean, in the game that we played on stream, we died, like an hour and a half in, and we hadn't even completed our first objective. Now, that included learning the game, so we were a little slow on that, for sure, but um, still, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a quick one. So we can teleport one player with Captain's Orders. Teleport one player to any room, ignoring all obstacles. They will respect your authority. I think we should do that. And what we're going to do is Captain's Orders... The scientist to Chefland. That way we can solve the crisis because when the chef cooks, he's going to move into the kitchen anyway. Then um, we're going to engage and we're basically just going to fill up the drive. I don't think I'm actually going to drive anywhere. Or maybe we could drive back to the, the final objective. Yeah, submit that. And we're trying to get back to here. No, that's good. Done. Just let the rest of the fuel stay in there. Some of the mechanics I'm still wrapping my head around. I don't know if I necessarily consider that a negative of the game, but there is complexity here. Welcome back. Dock ship. Okay. Um, dock ship Gumji. Let's uh, go next phase. Hand value is pretty good. We should buy... Flux Inverter for extra power, maybe. Balance us out and leave the silk for somebody else. And our turn. And our chef is going to go. It's possible they might be able to cook on this turn. Okay, chef's turn. We need the anti-pepper, which I think we already have. Yeah, we have the anti-pepper. We need cook, and we just got it. Now we need two power. So we'll start with a taste test. We have one power. We have one power. So we'll do a taste test. Continue. Wait, taste test is not... Oh, it is what I meant. Yeah, it moved us back. And we'll take a taste of the future, because um, that lets us then cook. Then we'll play cook with two power. Submit. Use the anti-pepper. There we go. Our bacon wraps are a hit on Mern. Nothing but smiley faces and full bellies, as far as the eye can see. It's times like this that make all the danger and near-death experiences feel totally worth it. Now on to our second suffer today. We hear the natives on G8, K6 are suckers for some antelope souffle. Let's not disappoint them. There you go. That's probably going to end the Let's Look At. I hope I talked enough about what I'd like and uh, find a little bit more Your Mileage May Vary-esque in some things that are maybe even a little bad. Like, I don't think the tutorialization is handled super well. Um, but all in all, I'm a huge sucker for board game mechanics mapped to a digital space, which is a pretentious way to say basically digital board games. Um, I think this is really good, and I think we will definitely find an opportunity to play it, if not on the NLSS, because it's a little long form, uh, in, in some other capacity, I hope, because this is actually really fun, and it definitely shines when it's not just one egghead playing it, it shines when it's, uh, when it's four people playing it and communicating and maybe even having a little bit of conflict, but, uh, again, it's $20, uh, on Steam, American, if you are interested in uh, picking it up. I would recommend definitely convincing other people to pick it up with you rather than relying on quick match, um, just because any social experience is better when it's with people you know, usually. Except, I guess, for anonymous uh, oral sex or something like that. Yeah, that's the, the only opportunity I could find there. Um, and now I made it weird at the end of the Let's Look At, but for now, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. Make sure to check out the game on Steam if you're interested in picking it up. Uh, it is 10% off for its opening week sale as well, which may be over by the time... No, it probably won't be over by the time this video goes up. Um, also, subscribe if you want to see more uh, First impression stuff in the future. It's back in a big way, and I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.